Jazzcast Pros. Hello, hello, business besties. Happy Monday. This is your girl, Motivation, coming to you from Heart of the Hustle podcast. We are so excited to be back with you. Today, we are going to talk about choosing a business name for your startup business. I am going to give you five quick tips. I'm not even going to hold you long. We are going to just give you five simple tips on how to choose your business name. We want a clear and powerful name because that can be extremely helpful when marketing and branding your business. Are you an entrepreneur at heart with the mind of a hustler? Then you found the perfect podcast to help you turn your side hustle into a profitable small business so that you can support yourself and your community. Welcome to the Heart of the Hustle podcast. I am your host, Monique. You can call me Motivation. With this podcast, my mission is to teach you all of the things I wish I knew before starting a business so that you can avoid the pitfalls of entrepreneurship and turn your passion into profitability. This episode of Heart of the Hustle podcast is sponsored by Textures Beauty Bar, located at 2352 Lau Avenue, where they specialize in all your hair care needs. Ladies, all ages and textures are welcome. Whether you have natural or relaxed hair, they have a solid that's perfect for you. Follow them on Instagram at Textures Beauty Bar or book your appointment at www.texturesbeautybar.com. Hey, business besties. Are you ready to learn to connect and correct? This is an invite to Rochester's first business brunch with networking series, June 25th, 2023, from 1 to 4 p.m. with special guests to help small business owners separate and correct some of the chaos that we have going on in our daily business functions. You can get your ticket at eventbrite.com. Search Business Brunch Expo. We'll see you there. So when choosing a name for your company, this is something that should be fertilizing and festering inside of your planning and building season. So just like we gave you how to build your business plan, maybe you don't know exactly what to call your business yet. It's kind of like when you're pregnant with a seed and you're giving birth to a baby. You're pregnant for nine months and... It takes you a while to come up with that perfect name because it has to have the perfect meaning. And then once you see the baby, it's like, yeah, she should be a Sarah. She looks like a Sarah. She looks like she's a Gloria. She looks like she is a Genesis. She's going to bring forth something. So your name of your baby, aka your startup company, the name should be something meaningful. The name should convey meaning, not just to you, but to your target client. It should be easily guessed. Like they should have no problem guessing what your business does. Like my company is the Groom Room Men's Spa and Lounge. And there are only a few guesses to what we do at the Groom Room Spa and Lounge. So you know that it's a spa. So immediately they're going to be guessing and knowing that when you come there, it's a spa, you're going to receive some services and you're going to be receiving relaxation, right? So you want to make sure one, that your business name conveys meaning. Your target client should know exactly what you do from what your business name is. This is something that, again, should be festering in the process of your planning. You don't have to rush to have a name as soon as you have the idea, because some of us can see and envision our business before we know exactly what to call it. It's the same thing as when you get a new puppy. You let him run around and you see his personality before you name him. So you don't have to rush into naming your business while in your planning season. So that is the first tip. Make sure your name has a meaning, okay? And tip number two, when choosing a name for your startup business, make sure it's something easy to remember. 
Something easy to remember means that we are not going to write a complete paragraph about what we do in our business as our business name. We are not going to name it the sneaker foundation that cleans sneakers because we are bomb and we bleaching everything from yellow to white dot com. That's not who we're going to be. We are just going to be sneaker cleaners dot com. We want to make sure that it's something easy and simple for people to remember. You want to make sure while making sure that it is easy and simple to remember that we are not drowning our businesses down with Ebonics. That is a no-no. We want to make sure that it is something easy to spell. The reason I say we're not going to use Ebonics while spelling the name of our business, because for one, let's be honest, it looks ghetto. It looks ghetto and we don't want to have our target client not take us seriously because of our name. We don't want to name it Watermelanesia and have people think that it's a joke when speaking, looking for, or coming to patronize our business. We want to make sure that it's something easy to remember and easy to spell. We are not going to use Ebonics in our business name. Okay, we want to make sure it's easy to remember so that it is something that the customer will not get confused about. We don't want to confuse our customers when they are searching for our business or searching for our services. We want them to take us as seriously as these Fortune 500 companies. So we are not going to spell pretty with an extra T. We're not going to add an extra Y if it's supposed to be an S. At um as girls, G I R L S, we are not going to add a Z. We want to be taken seriously, okay? So make sure we are not dubbing our business down by using Ebonics. Okay. In contrast, we want a clear and powerful name in your marketing and branding efforts. Keeping it simple will keep it very simple. Uh, simplified for your marketing strategies. So just make sure that it is something easy and simple to remember because there is power in simplicity. Number three, we're going to pick a name that would not limit us if we are going to grow. We don't want our business to limit us to a product, to a service, or to a city. So we don't want to call our business Rock City sneakers because now or rochester city sneakers because now when we grow and we want to franchise we can't take this thing to san francisco we can't take this thing to atlanta we're going to have to switch the names so we want to make sure that we are using a name that will not limit us we don't want to just say we are just a company that sells pins when in reality we can sell all kinds of journal items such as notepads, markers. We don't want to limit our company to one product, one service, or one city. So make sure you choose a name that you can elaborate on and that you can grow into or grow from and expand because we're thinking big, right? Millionaires, we're thinking expansion. We think in expansion, so we don't want to just limit ourselves to a service, a product, or a city. Now, don't don't get all frantic with this next one. You want to go and conduct a thorough search for the name that you are using. And what you're going to find may discourage you a little bit. It should only make you pause. It should not be a showstopper. Somebody nine times out of 10 is already using the verbiage or the name that you have come up with and created in your mind that you let fester in your planning season. Somebody may already be using that name. Okay. Don't be discouraged. What you have to do is expand on the name, adding words such as the and to to make the name a little bit different, especially if they are within uh, your rural rural area or your city or state. You want to make sure that you stand out differently from said business that has an identical name. You want to make sure that your name is identical, but unique for your niche. And like my coach, Jazzy T always says, the riches are in your niches. So You don't have to, again, dub it down to make it only for your product, your service, or your city. 
but it, make sure that your niche name stands out even if you find a company that is identical with the name that you have already chosen, okay? We're going to make sure that we are standing out because when I did my search for the groom room, literally, I swear to you, 50,000 groom rooms came up and it ranged from everything from pet grooming to barber shops to uh, sneaker cleaning to shoe shining. And I just had to add on spa and lounge so that people could identify and differentiate my company from a company that is using the same verbiage in the same name and maybe in the same city so that we can stand apart. Okay. This is another tip to make sure that you go and grab the dot com domain for the name that you are choosing. If it is available, you search it up and make sure that you are choosing the dot com domain rather than going to get a dot net, a dot org, or a dot biz. I don't know why, but people relate the dot com to being a more established business rather than a dot net or a dot biz. I don't I don't I don't think that um I would take a business seriously if it was the groom room and spa dot biz because we are so familiar with a dot com we would definitely veer to a company that is a dot com versus a dot net or a dot biz. So think of you getting that dot com domain, even and on it, it's really cheap. Uh, GoDaddy is about twelve to fourteen dollars to to grab a dot com domain. Make sure you grab it and just think of it as a business investment. So even if somebody does have the same name, if they haven't been smart enough to go and grab the dot com, people who are searching for that name in the SEO, your business will come up first because you have grabbed that dot com domain name and people will shop with you before they shop with the next company who is a dot biz or a dot net. Okay. So think of it as an investment. Okay. So again, choosing the name for your startup company, if you want to trademark it, make sure you go through the proper steps for trademarking. It is a long way. It is a long process. Sometimes you even forget about your trademark. Like I have a trademark I have been waiting on and fighting for like it is literally tiring to get a trademark, but it is well worth the wait because that means that that name belongs to you. That company name belongs to you and someone else cannot go around near or far and use that name of your baby or your slash startup business, your, your startup company. Hey, if you like this episode, check out Getting Real with Bossy, where we chat about what it's like to be a woman business owner. You'll hear interviews with women who are doing what it takes to succeed and the reality of what that looks like. We cover all the topics, figuring out the rules and regulations, navigating business partnerships, even if that's your spouse, motherhood while running a business, working within your values, and all the ups and downs of being the boss. Are you ready to get real? Pop over to our podcast, Getting Real with Bossy. So this is a recap of how five tips to choose your business startup name. One, make sure it conveys a meaning. Two, make sure you go and grab the .com domain rather than settling for the .net, the .org, or the .business. Three, conduct a thorough search for the name. Make sure you do not get discouraged if another business has that name. We are going to maneuver and pivot around and add some words in there like and, the, or, to make your name stand out. And four, we are not going to pick a name that would limit us to a certain product, service, or cities. We are going to pick a name that we can grow into and grow from. And number five, we are going to make sure our name of our business is easy to remember and easy to spell. We are not going to use Ebonics. We are not going to replace S's with Z's. We are not going to add T's. We are going to simplify this thing so that we look professional once we reach our success, okay? 
reaching a level of success, you do not want your name to limit you to look like a joke. Okay. That's, just, that's exactly what we are not going to do. So what I want you guys to do is in the comments, I'm going to leave you a PDF that you can print out and we are going to jot down some names for our businesses that we want to birth. So I'm going to give you a list. You can write down some names that you are thinking about naming your business and you're going to do a thorough search and use these five tips to go through each of these business names that you choose. OK, use this list to write down your ideas and go over with people who you trust. Go over with people that you trust and see what they say. Make sure you are getting positive and negative feedback on the names. See if the people in your support system think that it's catchy. See what they think of the name. See if they, if your target client will know exactly who you are, what you do, and choose you simply by giving your name, okay? So make sure you are shooting that name out in the atmosphere to people who you love and trust and see exactly what they say so you can narrow down the name that you are going to give to your business baby, okay? I want you guys to, to use this podcast to help you decipher your chaos. This is what I had to go through when starting my business, I had to learn over and over um, some steps that I'm teaching you. I did not with my first company. I did not research the name and then I did not secure the name. I did not trademark the name. So there was another company who came and and took my whole identity. I had to get a lawyer to get them to uh, cease and desist on using my name and my image for my product. So make sure you are searching a name that is not easy for people to replicate. I am trying to assist us and and us, I mean the community to, to not dig yourself deep into holes that are drowned in. What I want you guys to do is take this week to name your baby or think about the name that you have for your current business and research that if you haven't already done that. The name that you currently are using whether you are LLC or DBA, research it in your town, country, and state and see if there's anyone else using a similar name. Go to your .com and see what comes up first in Google when using your business name. So let's let's use this time to see exactly how good we are with naming our baby to stand out in the workforce, okay? Okay. Remember that June 25th, if you need assistance in your business and you are in the Rochester, New York, Buffalo or Syracuse region, come out to the business brunch. We have a panel of four CEOs who are doing great in business and they are going to tell you how they got out of their struggle. We have uh, the owner of Glow Spa, Rock. She is amazing. If you ever follow her on Instagram and see her marketing, she is absolutely amazing. We have Raquel, who has her own line of leather handbags for women that says, I am the bag. I have a few of them. She also has stockings. Like They're going to tell us their journey. We also have an up-and-coming CEO of the Toast Factory. Mr. Keith Brown, he is going to tell you about his journey and give you some tips on how to become successful in the restaurant business, how to maintain your menu so that stands apart from every other restaurant here in the region and how he went from startup to success. So I want you guys to make sure you grab your tickets on Eventbrite. The link is inside of the (laughs) Heart of the Hustle podcast. You can click on the link. There are only 20 seats left. So if you want to be in the building and you want to get your hand held to get some great business advice, you will have us for four hours, four hours to ask questions, to take notes. And we have so many goodies for you guys. It's going to be unbelievable. We have Dame Israel coming in with his business credit boot camp, and we are going to be giving you guys some of his tips and tricks for free. Like you cannot miss this. You have to be in attendance for your business. June 25th, the business brunch. You can get it on, get your tickets on Eventbrite or click the link below. Per usual, I'm going to leave you guys with what my mother has always said to me. Nothing comes to a sleeper, but a dream.
Join us for our next episode of Heart of the Hustle podcast, where we will be introducing you to our segment called Prison to Profit. So this will be for anybody who's ever been incarcerated or who is going through recidivism, who needs assistance with learning how to become an entrepreneur or who is trying to venture into entrepreneurship. We have a special guest, Mr. Kivo Owens, who uh, is going to show us some ways to pivot from prison to profit. So make sure you guys join us, put on your notifications for this podcast. If this is you, if this is something that you know that you need, if this is assistance and guidance that you know that you can use in your your business and your everyday life, turn on the notifications for How to the Hustle podcast or share it with your new business besties. Share it with people who you know can use the information, okay? The Heart of the Hustle podcast on the JazzCast Pros Network. Visit heartofthehustlepodcast.com or just hit the subscribe button below. Over and out.